Dear beloved in the Lord, tonight as we come together, we come together in a night of remembrance. I invite you to please join me in prayer. Lord Jesus, we do give thanks to you for the blessing of our salvation. We thank you that you have made yourself the Lamb who has atoned for our sins, a better sacrifice, a sacrifice once and for all, that every one of our sins would be paid for, that from the original sin to the sins we commit to the sins that we are yet to commit, that you have paid for every one of them, that we might come before you at one with our Father. We pray that throughout the end of this Lenten season, that as we prepare for your death and your resurrection, that we would look forward to our final resurrection when we may rise with you. All this we pray through Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. Amen. It's hard to imagine, but try to imagine 3,500 years ago, the cacophony of noise that must have filled the ears and the hearts of the people of Israel. As they stood on one side, they heard the waves of the Red Sea crashing against one another. On the other side, the thump, 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 thump of the Pharaoh's army as the horses pulled the chariots, the yells of Pharaoh's men as they approached them. But probably more than anything else, what was deafening in their ears, in those Israelites' ears, was the pounding of their hearts. The pounding of their hearts and their chests as they were full of fear. Their pulses must have been racing. Here they were standing and had no place to go. They were caught between Pharaoh's men and caught between the water. What could they do? Would they even see mourning? Had they trusted the wrong man, following Moses, was he really from God? Here again, the question they asked of him. Was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you brought us to the desert to die? To the wilderness? What a, what a different attitude than the night before. The night before, they didn't know exactly what was to come. But less than 24 hours before, there was anticipation. So much so around these Israelite families that it was probably palpable, even touchable in front of them. They probably could imagine, what did the Lord have in store? After 400 years of being in servitude and slavery, under the hand of Pharaoh's cruel leadership, the Lord was going to let them go. He had heard their cries. He was going to deal with them mercifully. So you can imagine, as these families knelt down together to receive this Passover feast, the hope and anticipation that must have filled their hearts at that moment, so different from the fear that was now cascading over them. What they didn't know now, they were scared to death. The Lord had promised that they would, be, that they would go forth. They had left Egypt, right? He had led them out. He had led them out as a pillar of cloud by day and pillar of fire by night. They knew he was there. But they didn't trust him. They didn't trust him to deliver them. Only Moses did. And he gives them this promise. Moses answered the people, Do not be afraid. Stand firm and you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring to you today. The Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. Only be still. Only be still with the sound of the waves crashing. Only be still with the sound of the thunder of, those, of the horses approaching. Only be still. I wonder what must have gone through their mind even with Moses' promise. Were they wondering to themselves, will we survive to see the morning? And if we do survive, will we go back to slavery? Is this really what freedom tastes like? Is it as bitter as it tastes right now? It's awful hard to be still, isn't it? When you're caught between a pharaoh and a sea. It's hard to be still when you're caught between a rock and a hard place, as many of us know. Many of us, when we're caught in a position like that, a position of fear, a position where we don't know what is yet to come, isn't that what causes us the most fear, not knowing what is before us? 
you want to act. There's a mantra that many people say that is not in the Bible, but it sounds like it could be, but it's not. God helps those who help themselves. Anybody heard that before? If you can find it in the Bible, let me know, because it's not there. But many people, they adopt this, don't they? They take that mantra for their, their lives, and they say, well, Lord, I know you're going to help me, but you know what? Why don't you go ahead and help me after I've done this? After I've gotten my finances, I know I'm drowning in my debt right now, but Lord, I'm not a, I can't wait for you to fix, to help me, to lead me to, into the right stewardship practices. Lord, I have these struggles with my friends, with my family, with my spouse. I'm going to fix them. I'll, we'll talk to Dr. Phil. We'll get a good self-help book. Lord, I can't wait for you to help me. Lord, we've, we've had a little rough conversation lately, haven't we? I haven't felt like you're listening to me. I haven't felt like you're there. I've been praying to you. I've been going to you, but I don't feel like you're answering. You know, I think I'm going to try this new program. I heard it works really well. When all we really need is that prayer, that time in the Word. No, the, the answer we often try to seek is not the answer of God, but the answer of ourselves. Now, don't get me wrong, we do, need, we do need to use those gifts and abilities God gives us. But so often we're impatient with God. We're not ready to wait for Him, to see what He has in mind, to see His deliverance. The children of Israel, what fear they must have had. But the plan God had was so much greater. Now, it would be easy to pick on them because they'd just seen all those miracles that God had done, all the plagues that He'd done, but... Are we really in the place to judge them? How many times in our own lives have we seen the Lord's deliverance in unexpected and amazing ways? How many times in your life has the Lord delivered you from a situation that no matter how hard you tried, you would reach the end of your rope and He delivered you despite all odds? See, our Lord, He... He is the one who delivers. So hard though, it's hard. It is hard, isn't it? To be still, to stand firm. To trust the Lord. To give everything over to Him. To put it into His hands. So hard it is for us to await His deliverance. To see His plan. But He has a plan. Now 3,500 years ago, the people saw it in a very amazing way. And I'm not talking, I hate to say this, about the Red Sea. That was pretty neat. Don't get me wrong. I mean, it was walking across dry land when there had been walls of water. But what I am talking about is the night before. The Passover. Because as amazing as the Red Sea event was, as amazing as it is that God was able to deliver them from the hands of Pharaoh once and for all, even more amazing was the night before. The night before when the Lord made him his people. When he in a sign that would be for the ages passed over. Because in that Passover it was, a, it was a sign for what was to come. For what we celebrate tonight. The coming of Christ. The Messiah who would be our deliverer once and for all. The one who would not merely deliver us from the sins of this world. From the pains and suffering of this world. But who would deliver us from our very sinfulness. The one who would step into our lives taking on human flesh only to give up that human flesh on the cross so that we might have life eternal. Even more amazing than the day-to-day -day deliverance we see is the deliverance we are going to have one day when we join our Lord in eternity. For in that Passover meal, when Christ made himself that Passover lamb for us, he gave us that promise and he gave us a gift. He gave us his body and his blood. He gave it to us in not just a symbol, not just an example, but in his very presence of coming and being with us. To strengthen our faith, to nourish us, to forgive us of our sins. Tonight as we receive this gift again, tonight as we eat his body and drink his blood, it is just as the disciples did 2,000 years ago as they ate of Christ's body and drank of his blood and they received that forgiveness of their sins. 
And it is because Christ gave his life on the cross to deliver each of us from our sins. Our Lord is the deliverer. He is the one who delivers us from our sinfulness. He is the one who delivers us from our pain. He is the one who delivers us from our loss, from our fears. So many of us, we've felt peer, fear and pain, questions in our life. We've not known what was going to happen tomorrow, the next day, the next week. But our Lord, the deliverer, he does. He walks with us each day. Tonight, as we celebrate that supper, we remember his presence with us. And we remember his promise to us that we will be delivered. As we eat of his body and drink of his blood, we will one day eat of his body and drink of his blood in his presence in the marriage feast which has no end. May you trust in the Lord your deliverer who comes in your pain and your suffering each and every day, who comes in your joy and your gladness, who comes all the, at all times, to deliver you, to be with him. Amen. Please pray with me. Lord Jesus Christ, we give thanks to you that you have taken on human flesh, that you have given us that flesh in, in, in your supper to eat of, that, you, that, your, that your veins and your arteries, they pulsed with blood in a very real way, but now we drink of your blood. Lord, as we eat of your body and drink of your blood this evening, we, we pray that you would provide us the forgiveness of sins and the strengthening of our faith. We pray, O oh Lord, that you would prepare us for what is to come tomorrow, for your death, for your sacrifice, the ultimate sacrifice. Reassure us in that gift of your sacrifice, of your body and blood, that we have deliverance. That although Friday will be here, that our Easter is coming. 